Oh. Said you're already. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, today is May 29th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter Five. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, that's me. I'm the Wombat. All right. And our guests today are Boudreaux from Kentucky. Hello, Boudreaux. We have George Brown, the second and a half, formerly from Brooklyn, now of East Tennessee, and Dread Pirate Higgs, all the way from the West Coast of Canada, pretty much. Hey, welcome. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about value and all that comes with it. I think it's going to be an interesting conversation. But I forgot to mention that I'm not just the Wombat. I'm carrying... <laughs> I was going to make a bad joke. I'll say I'm the wombat plus these guns. Let's go. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's me. Uh, the transformation we're to, complete. Yeah, we're going to get into a really meaty topics regarding uh, value today and a bunch of other stuff. But before we get into those meats and potatoes, we're going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Arr, our noodly lord who art in a colander, Aldante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as they are with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Rah Rah man. Man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Guys, I have been having some fun playing some disc golf. I've been having some fun with, you know, enjoying the weather. I had my mom over here for a whole week last week, had a really good time showing her around the city, letting her open up my life. I hadn't seen her since COVID. So that was what's been going on with me. And now she's back home. She's safe. We had a great visit. I'd love to hear how everyone else has been doing. Let's go around the horn. Boudreaux, what you been up to? How you been? Hey, everyone. Uh, been great. Two shows in a row for me. This is great. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Fully tuned bass guitar. Or it looks like a bass guitar in the background. Not bad. No, wait. That's yeah. not a bass guitar. I feel bad now. That's a five no, no, string. No, no, no. That's five five string bass. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. All right. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. D Gent. So right. actually, I've been I've been playing some Chris Cornell songs with some friends. Uh, nice. Just this month was his five year, the five year anniversary of his his death. So we're gonna play a bunch of Chris Cornell songs for some friends and, um, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Small oh, and I caught COVID. No, are you real? Oh, no. Is it First right time. now? Right now, you're sick. Uh, I'm not sick, but I've tested positive. So let me tell you the great thing about this. Isn't it great to be sick now when most people are vaccinated? The the hoarding yep. has stopped. You know, you can go to the doctor's visits. There's plans in place like that. That's the, how it should be working. Like now, yes. it's not as big of a deal, and I'm I'm really happy happy for you to get it now. Yeah. <laughs> then in the yep. rush of it. Yeah, it looks like you'll bounce back. I did have a funny story about Boudreaux when I visited his home. He was like, oh, you play guitar? You can play guitar. Like he had some guitars on the walls, but they're all like mint condition tailors, like very <laughs> high level guitars that you don't just like pick up and strum. I'm like, I don't want to break this. I barely know this guy. I feel like I've, he's setting me up for an insurance fraud sort of situation. Oh. <laughs> Please take back your instrument. Thank you. Uh, Dreadfire well, Higgs, how have you been? I've been doing pretty good over the last week, uh, getting lots of... Uh, stuff done now that we're finally getting some um half decent weather so nice been doing a lot of catch up our uh, our spring has been a month and a half behind so um you know the the things that need to be done pile up rather quickly and mm. uh and so yeah the moment the sun shines i'm out there getting it done but the weird thing is you have too many hobbies you're either you're either firemanning uh, i'm building. not i'm not firemanning anymore i i that's been done for a while i haven't even um, touched the top of the iceberg it's the higgs boson particle <laughs> discussions classroom teaching, <laughs> anarchy driver's license uh rebellion uh yeah. hosting weddings 
fighting yeah. off cougars, security guard, tech talk, man. That's like, right. You, you, I don't know what just doing. I'm just getting things done, Ty. It's like, that can mean 40 different things for Dread Pirate. Who knows? Yeah. Well, uh, the latest thing that uh, happened was that um, I had been issued my uh, security and private investigator license um, with with my tricorn. So and now you're a Dread Pirate Higgs PI. That's it. But uh, interestingly enough, uh, just, and this was in February when I was issued the license, um, I just got a letter uh, from uh, Security Programs Division uh, on Monday saying, hey, we've made an administrative error. You have to send back that license and, and here's the one without you wearing the tricorn. So um, I wrote him back and I said, hey, look, uh, this is, I, I told you before that my, um, you know, this is a passport quality photograph and I'm wearing it because of my religious uh, convictions and I am see seeking counsel because this represents an existential threat to my livelihood and I will not have it. Good. So, uh, because he said, he, they, they put a, uh, a, a self-addressed stamped envelope in there saying put the put your old license in there and send it back by june 5th or something right and um and so anyway like i said i'm 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 running with this i'm going Here to we council. go go for yep. it go for and it and the it's ombudsman office and the ombudsman you're telling them our religion's silly you know he, yep. he, he's well, good for it. everybody or not or no hats for anybody but don't start picking that's right that's he, not your job can't pick and choose can't pick and choose i dig it i dig it keep fighting it like I said, if I was in Canada, I'd be doing it's like, get me a license too. I got free time. Just yeah, give me whatever you exactly. want. Uh, George Brown, second and a half, man of mischief. Well, I, I won't stand for it either. So <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on your side. Dread I'm on Pirate. Dread's side. It's, it's easy. Yeah. It's easy. It's, now, you're in investigating honor, the investigators. You're watching the watchmen. <laughs> that's right. So there. Yeah. Um, now, in, in, to comment upon Boudreaux's bass guitar, I would say if I were reincarnated as a musician again, um, I would want to come back as a bass player because okay. I think there's nothing cooler than to play the, the underpinnings for everybody else. I think that's really cool. Like to sit there on the low notes and just yeah. dig oh, yeah. whatever's there going is. on above. Yeah. Boom, 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 Let's go boom. for it. Let's go for it. Let's go. Yeah, I would do that. I would do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So something that's but in my in my county where I live, the vaccination rate against COVID is uh, is about forty one percent, if I understand it right, and um, <clears throat> the dead bodies just keep piling up mm -hmm. and piling up and piling up. It's the number that I look at is uh, is the COVID death rate, wow. and sometimes when I tell people that um, I'm concerned about this, they say, "Oh." The numbers are misreported. The hospitals are getting paid extra money for reporting COVID right. dead bodies, yeah. you know? And so I just, when people say stuff like that to me, I, I check it out. And right. believe it or not, no, no less an authority than Fox News said that the numbers were not being inflated by the hospitals. They were being paid, but they are being paid extra for COVID, uh, COVID debts, but they're well, the not taking is, advantage of it. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the thing is, why, why would they get paid to report deaths? Because you, you don't care, take care of dead people. You take care of live people who are sick. Well, the, the, the deaths, probably, in other words, the deaths happened in the hospital, so they had to do something. Yeah, yeah well, it's so the coroners that actually record those numbers, not the hospitals. Oh, well, I mean, hmm. The simplest thing I've always heard is, is look at excess deaths, you know, look at compared the deaths, you know, this year, yep. you know, to 2019 to 2018, you know, account for population. And that's, that makes that's, sense. Yeah. yeah. And when you look at it, we have like 100 X. Well, what is it? One million excess deaths yeah. from a disease that was largely preventable. Uh, yeah. with just good planning and vaccination in America only e even and accounting for excess <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, mental health deaths. I mean, they've even yeah. they've even seen an uptick in that, and mm -hmm. and and pulled those out of the the equation and said even even ignoring this, right? Uh, and, and and highway deaths. We've had more highway fatalities uh, than than previous years, even though we've had fewer crashes. Well, overall. That's weird. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! Look Alex, at you. 
Is that from your three? Is new thesis stats? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. If if we remember correctly, he's doing a touring dissertation on <laughs> highway public safety. That's some true facts from Bridger. You can only get that here. I was right. I, I was going to say this before we transition to the main topic. You may ever want to try buying a violin or a, a viola bow and playing it with your bass. It actually plays and it oh okay he's gone it looks like he's already had the idea <laughs> but what about the, the basses usually come with bow i mean people buy bows for bass oh he's got it, it already yeah <laughs> oh and yours is a nice out. short one yeah that's probably a lot better yeah, yeah. this is for the double bass it's for an upright oh bass. yeah 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 when i figured you could do that i was like what so out of bass guitar you could do it as well you have uh, to worry about the little oh, bit of cool. the rosin getting on but it it's it's basically turns your bass guitar into like an electric violin that has like a deep sound. Anyway, you're right, Larry. We thank you for helping <laughs> us get back on topic. <laughs> I want. We really haven't need... even found out what Doubter Five's been up to. Oh yeah, Doubter Five. What have you been up to? Help. He's been waiting well, for us. His <laughs> yeah, I put a picture up. Um, I, I actually went to this church this weekend. I didn't internally combust. <clears throat> But um, <laughs> it's the first time I've been in a church for a long time. I had to wow, that's the a, church. A, fun a funeral. Yes, this is the Big Butter Jesus Church right, in right. Uh, just north of uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, but it you know, had to sit through the usual um, sermons that they do, in addition to the eulogy to the deceased. And it, you know this particular time they were telling everybody what actually is going on in heaven with her which was kind of a, a stretch even you know i would think for a baptist church so the whole story behind big butter jesus for folks who who haven't been uh, catched up on the show we're a radio show and we play music in between the break and there's a song that we love on the show called big butter jesus about a yellow statue of jesus that is at the location that Larry went to to go to church that actually got hit by lightning and melted and fell apart as if it was made out of butter. That's they rebuilt yep. they they rebuilt it, but it's also a funny thing where it's like a statue of Jesus being uh, yeah. destroyed by an act of God. Right. I, I was corrected there. Uh, it was what the preacher imagined was happening in heaven rather than what <laughs> was. So he wasn't making a claim, as it were. Okay, fair enough. It's still a weird. It's still a weird picture. Uh, at, at the end of the day because you only see jesus from the back right you know okay yeah. well guys we got emails um i made a friend uh playing disc golf he was actually at the sunday assembly nashville we had he came to our course and he sent me a follow-up email based on the recommendation of this show and i just want to share it with you guys hello ty i really enjoy watching your uh, podcast i'll be playing it when i'm on disc golf disc golf courses in the future hello ty sorry your latest so he goes into talk I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. Okay, so he does say, does religion have the capacity to add value to anything or does it imply value by devaluing other stuff such as women's rights, personal freedoms, et cetera? And this is the, the meat of why he's asking that. Uh, your latest show topic reminded me of a show called Severance. It's a streaming show about corporations that can sever your work-life persona away from your home life in a way creating two versions of yourself. The work-life personas are stuck at work for the rest of their lives and find it a living hell, but can't get out of it until their home life versions agree to set them free. And so there's an interesting comment on value that I'd like to get your thoughts on, given that the characters, the home life characters get value by devaluing the lives of the workers. A character on the show stated something that resonated with me. Things have value because we devalue other things. People are no different. So does religion have a capacity to add value to anything or does it simply imply value by devaluing other stuff, such as women's rights, personal freedoms, et cetera? And we'll go around table. Does religion add value to anything? Or does it actively add value to anything? Or does it operate by devaluing other things and changing, arranging that hierarchy? Uh, we'll throw it out to Ujo. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Huh. Does it add value? Hmm. I, I think, yes, it does. And in absence of, of other, you know, codes of morality, for sure. I mean, you know, if we, we were all just born without anything, um, let's, let's say we were born with just language and that's it. No, no, hmm. um, no source of morality or anything like that. No societal I, I, values. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, 
I mean, I think it, w- it add, adds value, but you know, at a, at a cost, because like, mm. like you said, there, there are catches to it, you know, right. Um, you can, you can add value in, in some ways, but take away devalue things like women's rights or, um, uh, and, and really any of the religions, most of the religions, it seems like they're, you know, devaluing other religions, right. Uh, or, or at least saying if, you know, you don't believe in this God or these gods, you're, um, going to have a bad time in the afterlife. So, um, I don't know that first bit though. I've, I've struggled with that in the past because I, you know, I, I, I like to think that there's, there's value in, in kind of just like the core, some of the core morality pieces of the Bible, but hmm. also I've been kind of just told that all my life. So I, I don't know that, you know, um, I'd you love a to upbringing, right? Like me, you're, you're upbringing yeah, religion, right? yeah, Catholic, but hmm. I don't know. I wasn't, I was never very um, involved and, um, I didn't pay attention a whole lot. So I don't know if it's just subconscious or not. Um, you know, uh, so yeah. Okay. Okay. Dread Pirate, what do you think? Does religion add value to anything or does it operate by devaluing? Maybe a mixture of both? I, I don't think it adds value, mm-hmm. um, but I don't think it necessarily operates by devaluing. Um, though in some cases it does. Uh, what, what always interests me is, is the sort of Mexican standoff uh, between the three uh, Abrahamic uh, religions, um, where they are, of course, mutually exclusive, even though they all believe in the same God. So, you know, in terms of uh, what Boudreau was saying is, uh, you know, uh, people make fun or devalue other people's religions um, to elevate their own. So in that sense, yes, there's a bit of devaluing going on. But again, I, I've always, I was having this image in my head, um, you know, uh, yesterday with uh, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad standing mm-hmm. in a uh, Mexican uh, standoff position, you know, sort of pointing guns at yeah. so that is, heads. <laughs> just be careful just if you draw that. Just be careful that. if you draw that. That's all I'm right. saying. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. I don't want to yeah. be uh, hugged yeah. or whatever. Eh? Okay. George Brown, love to hear what you're saying. You saw your hand raised. What's up? Well, well, this is just like a joke, you know, a rabbi, a, a, an imam, and, and a minister walk into a bar, you know? Right, yeah. right. And, and, they, all, they, and they, all, email, they look like they all got like, admitted to emergency for concussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I don't know the rest of the joke, but that's, I'll, I'll start it. Maybe we can make up make up the, the rest of the joke among us. Sure. But um, okay, about has religion given us anything? Yes, it has, um, in a way, or at least it, it has formed a focal point for the arts at different times. I mean, th- thinking in my own discipline in music, um, the the Catholic Church during the Renaissance was a wonderful arena for um, musical musical composition and performance. And then in the Baroque period, the Protestant, you know, the, the German Protestants um, gave us wonderful, wonderful music. And um, so I, I have to honor that part of it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's all turned to, to garbage after that, but... Mm. Um, at you know, least in those period, and, and artwork too, I think. I hear what you're saying. I definitely, I definitely think it it was like a university. It formed a structure where like-minded individuals can get funded to generate some beautiful art, right? I like and, that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And then, in more extreme cases, religion, the same religions even, are also responsible for saying no music is allowed. You can only sing these holy texts, or no dancing is allowed, or this mu- this instrument is too suggestive in its form and is no longer holy and we don't accept that here anymore so long saxophones stuff like that so Mm -hmm. you know i i it makes me feel like it's not so much the generator of the brilliance but instead just got brilliant people in the room for a moment in time to come up with work that they could have made without religion being a part of it anyway um Though I, I definitely don't think we would have some of the, the chamber music that we have if we didn't have the religious impact. Uh, Larry, uh, uh, would you like to add to this? Do you think? Uh, well, you're you're basically saying that inspiration is responsible for it, or uh, this quality of the stories hmm. are responsible for it. But it also brings. I think the inspiration is what you're talking about that brings people together yes. to uh, act on it. 
to be right. able to generate right. uh, uh, music or plays or whatever artwork. However, as far as devaluing, I think it, it goes a long way to devaluing humanity itself, mm. uh, saying that we're you know, sin, <coughs> sinful creatures and, yep. and not worthy of, of you know, life, as it were, without divinity in it. Um, it what is it? Morality itself, a societal morality is devalued uh, in, in the divine command theory. Because it says, you know, you can't really be moral if you don't have a, a, a moral agent telling you what to do, um, as represented in their holy books. So Good it point. does devalue some things to make itself more valuable. I would agree, because otherwise you would have been a regular person. But once you fall into a religious dogma, you're now a sinner or subservient to a thing right. that you can't even see, view, test, talk to, etc. It's, it's, right. it's a devalue of your humanity. Boudreau, do you have a follow-up thought? Yeah, I, I guess the other well, the, a piece I didn't make uh, that I think is important, there's a temporal aspect to the question, too. Ooh. If we're talking, you know, thousands of years ago, the, uh, I, I like to plug the, 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 the podcast uh, Hidden Brain, NPR's Hidden Brain podcast. They had an episode called Inventing Religion that went back to kind of a good uh, uh, hypothesis that, you know, religion was kind of invented as we as we grew as a society to got, where we got so big that people could kind of freeload and they could not do the work or, or they can they, they they wouldn't be caught doing bad things because the group was so big so they said hey just like we do uh, around christmas time with our kids you know mm -hmm. we can't watch them all the time right so hey the big guy in the sky is watching you mm -hmm. so there was a, there was a value added there where you 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 had this like punishment for people and, and an incentive not to misbehave because you told them you lied to them but you told them something someone was watching you it kind of it, it got us to, to to operate in bigger groups so uh, at least more successful i totally agree and i hear what you're saying and i'm going to devil's advocate that point too because it feels sure. like that put our society on the path where you have to have the god fear to be a good person whereas if <clears> we if i know it's i know this is the part where i push but like if we set ourselves up to where independently we knew the consequences of our actions that we really made it hard, uh, uh, a diligent matter to educate children on the beha their behavior, their inhibitions, and what it means to be empathetic in, in, a, in a society where our actions affect other people. Maybe we could have had a society where we never needed to have that God fear to, to, ma to manage our conduct. We could have just had good behaviors from the get-go because we've had it indoctrinated in us to teach our kids to be compassionate members of society. And because we haven't done that, now we're in a situation where, you know, every single time we turn on the news, there's something terrible going on, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, and I wonder if that could have put us on a better track than where we are now. And now we're trying to struggle to get ourselves caught up. And I think maybe that's the cost that we had, like, because we took I, a shortcut. I agree, except I wonder if it would have taken us a lot longer to get there, mm. um, possibly. But, but no, you're absolutely right. It, it, it seems like it backfired or it had some 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 pretty bad consequences it would have been yeah. a cost either way i think like, yeah. there's probably no perfect option for that but i do like what you're alluding to uh, uh and then we get to dread I, uh, in fact let's get to dread i'll go back to what you're going for eric what's yeah up well i was just going to of course point out that uh, value is of mm. course a an entirely subjective uh, matter right Ooh. talk to yeah. me so well i mean you know people who are ensconced in religion will certainly say yeah, I see all kinds of value to my religion and, mm. and my belief system. So, uh, and, you know, is it, is all, are all values valuable? I guess is what the ultimate question is. Like, is there a meta value okay. um, <clears throat> that uh, we can actually <clears throat> refer to and say, um, these values actually don't kind of match up with a meta value. Say meta value is the advancement or um, the, uh, you know, uh, improving uh, the lives of people, generally speaking, sure, um, in more empirical ways. If that was the meta value, then we could say that the values of different religions may vary as they progress towards that or don't at all. I got an epistemological approach to this because I really don't care too much about objective value, but I do care about how we measure value, right? 
and like that process that we're going to say, this is more valuable than this or less valuable than that, that I can't ever assess the truth. Cause I agree with you, Dred. I do agree that it's ultimately subjective, but I do think we can come up with some sort of objective standard and lacking that, at least for the sake of this conversation, I can say that if I, if it is subjective to an extent, I can say, let's start off with an even playing field, right? And be like, there's people, there's my car, there's my disc golf collection, there's this empty can of soda that's at my desk. Are they all the same value? If not, how am I going to rank them, right? And then I have like people at the top and then like my car and then my items at the bottom and stuff like that, yeah. right? But then- Well, that's what I was talking about, meta values, right? Right, or, right, right. And I guess and I guess I put people at the top because I'm a person, right? And I'm sort of biased in that way. And that's the subjectivity to it. But I do feel like religion takes another step and says, okay, well, it's these people or it's this group of people who are more valuable than this group of people. And I'm wondering like what criteria you're basing that on other than God said so or- uh, uh right. some tribalistic benefit that you get from that belief because they're going to do the same that other group's going to do the same thing with their but god's too. on the top of the list though like, <laughs> god, god tells you <laughs> he's on the top <laughs> god, yeah. it's true true god says don't look at any of the other gods i'm the one god that's, that's on top. Right. He's like wait there are i'm other the gods? most valuable god i'm the most valuable only one of my thing that is better than all the other other things that are here uh, that's the first I, commandment <laughs> it's a terrible first command uh we'll get into why that could have been beta tested better we got like eight minutes before the end i want to uh highlight something that you were saying uh eric in that way back when when we had to use religion and had to pass a word of mouth and make that that story recorded through volume of people speaking that was like the best way that we could record folklore and and stories of people who aren't around anymore and in my sense, I think like, we don't know what happened on a normal Tuesday in Viking culture, but we know the stories of their gods. We don't know about Egyptian culture, what happened 14 on, on the fourth month of every year, but we know uh, stories about Anubis. We know stories about uh, 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 Wakanshu, all their gods, right? Because that's what gets passed down. That's what gets recorded. And it gives us impressions of their culture. That mythology as we accept it as a mythology is what gets recorded. And I think there's value in understanding how people thought, how they set up their values through religion, but we can accept it as a mythology. And what I would appreciate is, can we teach religion now, like the Christian religion and, and other popular Abrahamic versions as mythologies, and we just accept it as models that are similar to how other people use those similar models in the past. Just don't teach it as a literal truth. And then it'll be, I, in my opinion, all value and no devaluing. If yeah. we just like, here's a good story that people pass down as part of human mythology. And right. I can- A I, study I, in comparative religion, right? Exactly. Yeah. And this is the way people thought then. Yes, yes. The exact same situation <clears throat> is like, when we hear the story about Icarus and the wax wings and he's flying up to the sky, we understand the, the, the story of hubris from that story. There's a good underpinning of, human behavior and psyche and why we should be wary about pride coming before a fall, right? We got that story. We don't have to actually believe Icarus had wings, right? So can we look at the stories of Jesus and be like, glean whatever nice things you want from it, but we know that it's not a literal truth. And, and then you're happily free to teach that to kids. Mm -hmm. And there's some silly things that can go on there. You can still teach the Moses story. You can still teach the Noah story, but we don't have to accept it as true. And we can still pull useful idioms from it. What's up, George Brown? Well, I was just wondering if, if Elon Musk's rocket ship has Dr. Zarkov on it. I don't know what any of those words Flash are. Gordon. Not... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yes, Zarkov. Larry. <laughs> yes, yeah. Larry. I got, got it. it. I got the reference. Okay. Is that okay. from uh, Doctor Who or something? No, no, no. That's from Fla Flash Gordon. Oh, Flash. Had, uh, yeah, I think it was a fifth. There was a guy. So, there was a yeah. guy on the rocket ship who was the scientist hmm. who just kind of sat there and and grunted, you know. Okay, so I guess we'll do a quick review then before we head out to the break. So uh, we do see some value adds by religions to societal value adds, morality value adds, folklore recording story um, adds. And then also we understand that value is subjective. And so there could be some problematic ways of how religion sorts things for us. But if we were to accept religion as a non-real model or like fiction, if we were to accept it just simply as fiction, maybe we can glean the values that we get from other cultures, mythologies, from the ones that are currently, you know, oppressing us at the, at, at what else can I, how else can I put it? 
and then remove ourselves from all the devaluing that comes with subjecting ourselves to a supernatural being or thinking that we're sinners or controlling lives of people who should have autonomy over their body or whether they cover their face or not, et cetera. I think there could be a lot of value given to us if we just accepted religion as the fiction as it is. And leaving it there, let's go to a break. How about that? It works. Stay tuned uh, to this channel for the second half of Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Question, Larry. Yeah. Can I? Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a moment just to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now. ASK has over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or outside on the patio if it's uh, warm and nice as it is nowadays. We're usually the loudest and happiest group, so you can find us easily. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom meeting, Ask Meetup. If you'd like to join us on Zoom, uh, send us an email at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com, and we'll send you the link for that. Uh, you can also find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or go to their website at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start Start one. one. That's right. Well, wrong back. What do you want to pick up? Hey, I want to give thanks to K. Choi for sending me that email. It was a really good conversation that we had. K. Choi, good friend of mine from Sunday Assembly. Looking forward to playing more with them in the future. Guys, I had another conversation about atheism as well. This is a, not an email. It was just a, a standard conversation we were having. Um, it was based on a comment that Larry made on a show a couple of weeks ago where he was saying that he played WoW, World of Warcraft, which is a long game that has been around for a long time and has been diligently designed and retooled to, to, to make itself entertaining for more players over generations now. The thing is, that game was beta tested. That game was very diligently made so that all the mechanics of that world worked, were compatible, and when it was released, was retooled as needed to make sure that the players had a very good and pleasant experience as they were playing. S does not sound like reality. If you look at reality, while reality is constantly retooling itself, it's almost doing it against the interests of life <laughs> and happiness and almost every every turn and every uh, uh, advent, whether it be climate change or pandemics or just our own societal, you know, manifestations coming about just due to a lack of good human behavior. And so I wonder, you know, if you're a God and you're making reality, did you beta test it? <laughs> and what kind of tools would we suggest that um, a, a, any God would employ in order to uh, sort of improve some of the things that we've been facing uh, recently? Like what would be your comment section if you had a means of sending concerns to the, the original manufacturer? And I guess we'll throw this out. Uh, Dread Pirate, you got a very stern look on your face. What do you think? <laughs> well, you know, if <laughs> it's funny. It's a funny question. Uh, you know, if God created the universe, uh, how would he know what tools he needed in order to improve it like i don't know <laughs> like i like i always maintain you know if, if if there was a god that created the universe there wouldn't be need for atoms and forces and constants and we'd all just be made of goop and it would just all be a magical thing and uh, working goop yeah working goop why do we got to need physics in this just like yeah, just make yeah. everything work it's just magical right i mean exactly and and that's and that's why it works so well you know thousands of years ago is because they didn't have appreciate an appreciation uh for the you know the constituents of nature uh, mm. you know outside of aristotle i guess he was the first one to kind of start figuring that out but uh, certainly um you know in the culture of uh, jesus and the jews they had no idea everything was magical and there was right. no need for explanation outside of a god created it and that's all there is to it 
let me get right to that point too. I, if you look at a game like Minecraft, which is a very popular game, kids love it. If you don't know, ask your six-year-old. But that game has things like fire and diamonds, et cetera. It has different elements and stuff, but fire is just hot. There's no oxidation that takes place in that world's physics. It's just a, a bit of data that says fire is hot. That's it. Diamonds are hard. They're like one of the hardest things. That's it. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to worry about the crystalline structure of carbon molecules right. reinforcing the rigidity or, of a structure. No, it's just- Or that it's even hot. made of carbon, right? Exactly. Or anything, right. Yeah. It's all bits of data that's simply, and it states what it is and it isn't broken and there's no way to you know cheat through the system. It's just fire's hot, diamonds are hard. What else? What else you got? And I feel like we could have benefited from a simple system like that. Larry Rose, <laughs> what do you think? Well- I just want to know why you think this isn't a beta test. <laughs> <laughs> no, it could be the virtual reality testing, you know, well, testing ground for new worlds, you know, and here's my complaint is going wrong. It's just part of the plan. So here's my complaint. And this is coming from a person who is making a, a virtual system for my job right now in terms of like handing paperwork. You always have a survey section at the bottom of the experience mm -hmm. where someone can rate the experience from one to five stars or one to 10, whatever you want. And then they add a little comment section detailing the problem that they had. You've seen it from Microsoft. You've seen it from billion dollar companies that size. You see it as small as little surveys that I'm making. It works and it's helpful and we need that. What do you think, Pedro? How do you know we don't have to take a survey when we die? Oh, that would suck, <laughs> man. That could that be the suck. pearly gates right there. It's yeah, the, exit, the exit interview. Yeah. So if, <laughs> if I'm doing, I would love to see that as a movie. That was one. Yeah. First of all, that's a great like pitch for a movie. The, the Good you know? Place, the good series. Place. It's just a room and a piece of paper. It's like, feel free to write down all your thoughts. And you can milk it for as long as you want if you just want to live in that purgatorial hell. Or you yeah. can just be like, this sucked. See you later. Bye. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever you want. Uh, free me to throw me back in. <laughs> throw you back in. Powerful, yeah. powerful, powerful. Uh, so... There's some good thoughts there. I love that. That was great. Uh, George Brown, second and a half. Are you familiar with beta testing as a concept? And uh... Oh, yes, very much so. Remember, I, I've worked in high tech and um, usability testing is usually not in the picture. And, uh, and I have the proof of it here. This phone made by a company named NUU is the most horrible user hostile piece of uh, you, you know, a product I have ever used in my life. Wow. Because nobody, nobody tested it for usability. Wow. It's, it's just a totally frustrating experience to try to use this telephone. I'm stuck with it because it's the only flip phone offered by my uh, phone company. Right. And um, usability to me is a very, very important thing. And mm. Um, aspect of beta testing and in in the in the software world uh usability is very rarely a part of the equation now it is on the internet i think google has it down very well um their their products are very seductive they are very user friendly but in my experience most software is is not user friendly and um you know, so as a person who's done a lot of writing, you know, te technical writing, um, I find that um, the the leading word processing programs are just awful to use, mm, right? Because they they they're just dreadfully user unfriendly, right? Whereas whereas the programs that were user friendly uh, from the from the days of DOS, wonderfully um, well handling. Mm. Um, uh, they had like a good professional musical instrument hmm. when you were trying to write the program Xyrite in particular, X, Y, W, R, I, T, E, never made it into the, um, the um, world of windows, you know, of, of um, the, you know, the graphical interface. So I find that we've gone backwards. Right. There's a competitive the market. Of, there was a competitive market of both industries and ideas to help facilitate good customer experiences and funnel out the bad ones. And if anything, the ones that are winning still do surveys where they can reply back and say, hey, fix, please fix these things. I hope people read them. If anything, comment forms. But like we need that for reality because right now it does feel like reality has not been beta tested, which is what we're talking about today. Swedish Steve, thanks for coming in. Bujo, did you have what any What do you mean by what do you mean by reality? <laughs> Don't make me define it. Boudreaux, did you have any ideas on like bugs in reality 
that you think could have been beta tested out if the system was just a little bit stronger? Or yeah, well, I think uh, the fact that our source of light gives us mm. cancer and you can't yeah. even look at it. I mean, <laughs> like, how, I, I, I mean, how is that not a, just a, a no-brainer to, you, to, to put a source of light? Here's the thing, too. It gives us – so, you know, it, it does that whole nuclear – cancer causing thing but right. for all the wars that have happened have been energy resource based if we had just made the sun not cancerous the light that it gives us non-cancerous and a little bit more efficient in terms of how it impacts earth we would have right. had all of our energy problems solved maybe right. that could have been world peace like ages ago dread pirate higgs pi what do you got <laughs> i yeah. saw you added that in there that's funny um well just just the fact that the universe is 99.99999 unlivable uninhabitable right um that's a, that's a pretty bad beta testing point there that uh, you know it should have been much more habitable if uh, if it was to be a, of any use absolutely at all yeah. swedish steve i also have this one too this is my personal peppy with the the state of our reality build right now there's just twice as many nipples there doesn't need to be that many nipples wouldn't you agree like world capacity of nipples is <clears throat> two times higher than it ever needs to be like i you could have reduced I it mean, in half and everyone been totally fine i mean like oh okay yeah, that's uh, uh, but if, if if a woman get twins she's she, let women have the nipples. Oh, but How males about males yeah. have nipples <clears throat> yeah. you don't need that yeah yeah yeah. Just, yeah we males need we, we need nipples why <laughs> <laughs> there the, the once was a, um, a Kenyan man who started lactating okay. uh, when w when his uh, wife died. Yes. Uh, so, so so and and for the the kinky people with the fetish of uh, <laughs> shit, sorry, BDSM and stuff. Uh huh. You can buy plastic nipples on Amazon and just put them on you. Is all. I'm yeah, I, I, I've awesome. seen them. Yeah. I'm, when, I, when I lactate, I lactate wine and beer. Yeah, yeah I, I also disagree with the concept of it's not a bug tie, it's a feature. It's like, no, no, no. It's stuff like that that you need to get out of your compiler as soon as possible. Uh, yeah, but, 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 but if, if, you're going, if you're going to reduce the nipples, then we can reduce a lot of things. Why two testicles? Why, why, why two ovaries? Why two kidneys? You only need one kidney. Just one simple but, one, and then get rid of yeah. the thing that would cause you yeah. problems. My you have to streamlining life, right? Just put it yeah. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> put it in the middle all the way up. You're done to go. Why do? Okay, Bujo, what do we have? Can we can we point out here though that we're arguing against um, um, intelligent design when really we should be thinking about the only reason we have men have nipples and and all these other things we're talking about is just a byproduct of evolution, yeah. which has no purpose. It doesn't right. have a goal. We're going to end up with inefficient things. We're going to end up with things that are that are useless, right. uh, tailbones and such. So, I think well, in some right there, like, that's a good argument yeah. against a beta test. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Just be like, make the thing that works on the thing that we need to be on, and call it. That's done. Please, yeah. it would save us all a lot of problem. Think about all the life forms that didn't make it through evolutionary process. We're lucky that we're here. We're we're six successful <laughs> organisms to an extent, yeah. right? It's, but even. I was going to say is that that's a point that Richard Dawkins make is that there's a lot there is far more many ways not to be alive than there is to be alive. Sure. Hey, right, 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 right. It's staggering the thought yes. that there's just you know even up to today babies born without fully formed hearts or mm -hmm. people born with malnourished brains or or incidents where if their mothers didn't get enough iron they now have some weird disease that they can't resolve and they die in the womb or they die or alzheimer's the even you know it's or terrible. dementia i mean yeah. all these things like yeah and dread you mentioned something that i still stick with me even to today it's the idea of even for a perfectly healthy person they still have no control of their sensory feeling of pain and it, wouldn't it be great to have pain be like a notification on your phone where it's like yes I agree. I'm in pain. Check mute for the next 24 hours. I still have other stuff to do. Like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. But you don't have to keep reminding me. It was like, I understand oh, my foot hurts. We're especially done. chronic pain when, exactly. it's, when it's not a serious illness that's not heart causing you a lot of harm, but you mm -hmm. still have to experience the pain. Yeah. We have a lot of things we would write down in that room. Give me that purgatory yeah. room. I'll write down some bullet points for you. Yeah. And, then yeah. I, and then I'm checking out. <laughs> Wasn't that someone's wish list? 
Didn't wish someone wish list. for? Uh, we we did we did some kind of a wish list on the program once, and someone said, "I wish we had a checkbox for pain." Yes, uh, yeah, that was dread. Yeah, I think it was that conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When we were talking about it. So we 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 basically promoted two really good movies before we close out the show. Larry promoted the whole "What if we are in a reality?" and this is the, this is the beta test. I love that. I'd watch that. I'd watch that student film for a half hour. I have the attention span for that. And then the second one is the you die and it's just an empty room with a survey. It's just a blank piece of paper and a pencil and it's your exit description form and you just basically if you want to detail all the things that you hated <laughs> about reality right. so that they can you know consider your comments on the next build and then for the most part it's up to you whether and, you want to and check loved. out and, and loved if you want to sure why mm -hmm. not why not, why not? It, the next it. universe expansion pack <laughs> the next universe expansion pack i love yeah it. like wow mm -hmm. expansion packs Guys, we're we're nearing the end of the show. Uh, we got six people on here. Let's do a roundtable. Things that you'd like to talk about, or things that you uh, would like for our audience to check out next week, and then anything that you'd like to plug. Uh, we'll throw it up to Dread Pirate Higgs, PI first. Anything you like sure. to plug? Yeah. Well, um, I, I didn't bring it down here, but I'm still working on uh, uh, Daniel Dennett's uh, Breaking the Spell, which is an awesome book about religion mm. and. Uh, and how do it's actually addressed um, to people who are currently uh, in religion or have religious faith. So, um, and he doesn't pull a lot of punches, which is nice, but at the same time is very articulate and respectful um, on why people believe the things they do and uh, why it's a good reason to reconsider your position in the face of evidence. So nice. Yeah, I, I would dig it. Check that out. I dig it. Nice. Daniel Dennett, right? Yes. Uh, Boudreaux, anything you'd like to plug or anything that you would recommend to check out? <laughs> yeah. Me? Yeah. How about something that ties nicely into what we talked about today? Uh, a plug for one of my favorite bands, Bad Religion. Um, a lot of their songs are about, about religion. Um, and one of their songs, uh, Better Off Dead. Mm. Uh, I'm not going to torture you and sing it, but a quick read of, of the first, uh, uh, the opener first. here. Mm -hmm. ties in nicely um bad religion better off dead i'm sorry about the sun how could i know that you would burn and i'm sorry about the moon how could i know that you disapprove i'll never make the same mistake um the next time i create the universe i'll make sure we communicate at length ah <laughs> nice there you I go love it. i love it i love it i love it <laughs> sweetest steve bad religion okay. okay producer at large anything that you'd like to plug and uh, anything that you, we should check out before next week Thank no, you. just, just, just uh, uh, help your local abortion uh, organization. I love it. I do love that. That's a good one. And we need it. Um, if there's something I'd recommend, I know George Brown, the second and a half is for setting up for a joke. So I'm going to say my part before he uh, <laughs> takes the show. But uh, I found a really good story, folklore related, that's also a re uh, religious sort of thing from uh, Africa where the comment is between the sun and the moon, the moon is more trustworthy, even though it's always telling a lie. The lie that it's saying is that I'm bright when all it's doing is reflecting the sun's light. However, you can keep an eye on it. And I like that. And that's what, that's something I like. So it is lying, but it's also more trustworthy than the sun. So that it's, it's one of those weird colloquialisms. Anyway, uh, George Brown, second and a half. Well, I decided that to put my joke off for another time, but I just want to <laughs> all that build up. Yeah, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it another time once more. I'm as I just disappointed say, in that as um, in religion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to say this: uh, this flip phone is made by a company called NUU. Uh, this is the one that has been frustrating me so much because it is so user hostile. So I wanna give them special credit for making the most user hostile consumer product I've ever tried. The company's name is NUU. New, so no. thumbs down for NUU. Yeah, no new here. Uh, I, yeah. And small correction, that's not an African uh, story. That's a West Indies story, which I just found out I have as part of my ancestry. So that's like, Kind of cool. Good visit. Like I said, with my mom being like, no, 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 you're from here. It's like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Anyway, Larry, feel free to take us out. Okay. Uh, I'd like to recommend that if, if you're uh, 
going through the throes of religious deconversion, a lot of times it helps to read what other people have gone through for that. And Reddit has a collection of deconversion stories uh, that I'd like to have people look at and at least be knowledgeable of. It's called The Great Project. And if you just do a Google search on Reddit, The Great Project, it will take you to, uh, straight to it. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, my, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Um, be sure to click on the blog button. You can find our radio shows there, all our archives, our atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. I have a book at uh, Amazon called Atheism, What's It All About? that will give you the ins and outs what atheist thinking is about. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Um, thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.